Recently, the NTSB has issued an urgent safety warning regarding the Boeing 737 MAX, even some older 737 nanograms models. This issue could pose a significant danger while the aircraft is in flight, and the consequences could be dire if it goes undetected. So, what exactly is the problem? What potential risks does it carry? And why Boeing has so many problems? Let's explore the answers in today's episode. On September 26th, the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB for short, issued an emergency safety recommendation concerning the vertical stabilizer system on Boeing 737 aircraft. The document indicated that in certain circumstances, this system could experience issues, leading to a phenomenon of being stuck or limited operational capability. The vertical stabilizer, located at the rear of the tail, plays a crucial role in controlling the aircraft around the yaw axis, ensuring stability and control during flight, especially during crosswind landings or engine failures. The specific issue highlighted was related to an incident that occurred on February 6, 2024, when United Airlines Flight 1539 from Nassau, Bahamas to New York faced an unexpected situation. Throughout the flight, everything went smoothly until the aircraft landed. Just as the captain attempted to use the vertical stabilizer to keep the aircraft aligned on the runway, he discovered that the rudder pedals were stuck and unresponsive to his inputs. In a swift moment, the captain decided to use the left rudder to control the nose wheel and maintain directional control. Despite the high pressure situation, the crew executed every maneuver successfully and the aircraft landed safely without any incidents. However, as the aircraft taxied to the gate, the first officer checked his rudder pedals and discovered that they experienced a similar issue. After the incident, when engineers from United Airlines examined the aircraft, they could not pinpoint a clear fault in the vertical stabilizer system. However, when the data from the black box was downloaded, they realized that the rudder had been stuck throughout the landing process and required significant force from the pedals to free it. To clarify the issue, United Airlines conducted a test flight three days later and successfully recreated a similar scenario. This led to an investigation by the NTSB, which invited stakeholders, including United Airlines, Boeing, the FAA, and Collins Aerospace, to participate. The issue was related to a component known as the Rollout Guidance Actuator, produced by Collins. The NTSB found that this component functioned normally under standard temperature conditions, but experienced significant performance degradation when tested in cold conditions. However, this incident is shrouded in many unexplained mysteries. The issue involving the rollout guidance actuator on the Boeing 737 MAX garnered particular attention as this component, despite being disabled at the request of United Airlines, caused problems within the control system. To perform automated landings, the aircraft requires both autopilot systems to operate simultaneously. However, the rollout guidance system was non-functional during the incident involving United Airlines, Flight 1539. Interestingly, even though it was not in use, this part could still affect the control system, particularly in cold temperature conditions. This led to the sticking of the ailerons, resulting in the incident during the flight. Concerns about the rarity of this issue were underscored when the NTSB issued an emergency safety warning, indicating the seriousness of the situation. There is currently no evidence to suggest similar incidents have occurred on other flights. Therefore, Boeing and Collins Aerospace are working with the NTSB to find a corrective solution. The timeline for resolving the issue and the prevalence of the rollout guidance actuator in Boeing's current fleet remain uncertain, but the complexity of the incident has raised many questions and concerns within the aviation industry. In addition, Boeing is facing numerous challenges, such as the worker strike and new safety issues, which are creating significant stress for the company. These safety concerns are particularly crucial when considering advanced systems like automatic landing capabilities, such as those required for Category 3 landings. Category 3 landings, which include Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie types, rely heavily on the reliability of the aircraft's systems to ensure safe operation under low visibility conditions. Any failure in these systems could have serious implications. During a Category 3 Alpha landing, the aircraft lands automatically, but the pilot must control the direction using the rudder pedals immediately after touchdown. In contrast, Category 3 Bravo allows the aircraft not only to land automatically, but also to maintain directional control without pilot intervention. Finally, Category 3. Charlie is similar to Bravo, but does not require the runway to be visible before landing. However, 
This type of landing is very rare due to poor visibility conditions, making approach and rescue efforts in emergencies more challenging. Notably, only a small number of the thousands of Boeing 737 in operation are equipped with the rollout guidance actuators necessary to perform Category 3 Bravo landings. Why mention the different types of Category 3 landings here? Returning to the United Airlines incident, there are many factors influencing an airline's decision when configuring its fleet. Cost, airport infrastructure, and internal procedures are key factors. To ensure consistency in training, airlines often strive to maintain a fleet where all aircraft use similar systems and procedures. In the case of the 737 MAX 8, involved in the incident, the aircraft was initially built for an Italian airline with a requirement for Category 3 Bravo landing configuration. This means it was fully equipped with the necessary systems for automatic landings. However, when United Airlines took delivery of this aircraft, they requested that the Category 3 Bravo landing capability be disabled, as this system was not used on their 737 fleet. Notably, even though the rollout guidance actuator was disabled, it remained installed and connected to other control systems, creating a potential risk. After the incident, although it's unclear what type of approach was used, the rudder system had become stuck in the neutral position. Following the first test flight in February, the rollout guidance actuator was removed and the aircraft was retested without any further issues. The investigation revealed that the component had frozen due to moisture infiltration, which caused the failure at cruising altitude. NTSB confirmed that this was not a design flaw, but rather a result of improper assembly. Collins Aerospace reported that a sealed bearing had been incorrectly installed, allowing moisture to enter and leading to the malfunction. This issue may have affected a total of 353 actuators delivered to Boeing since 2017, impacting both the 737 MAX and older 737 Next Gen models. United Airlines has nine 737 MAX 8 aircraft equipped with the faulty component, making these the only ones experiencing this issue in the United States. According to Dominic Gates of the Seattle Times, there are also 16 additional 737 with similar components, but these have been leased to foreign airlines. However, both NTSB and Boeing have not disclosed the exact number of the 353 affected components that have been installed on operational aircraft, some of which may still be in spare parts inventory. As of September 30th, the NTSB indicated that up to 40 international airlines may operate aircraft equipped with these components. Can you guess how big the risk of an accident is? Since the incident, United has removed these parts from the rest of its fleet, but not all 737 MAX operators worldwide are aware of their aircraft containing the faulty part. This is why the NTSB wants to see further action on this issue and added that two other airlines have also encountered similar problems with their 737 aircraft as early as 2019. The plane maker said in August it informed affected 737 operators of a potential condition with the rudder rollout guidance actuator, which is part of an optional Autoland system. The Autoland system includes layers of redundancy, and we are working with our supplier to develop additional guidance to address the potential condition. However, the NDSB emphasized that simply communicating this information wasn't enough to meet their expectations for addressing the safety concern. They pointed out that Boeing needed to take more concrete actions to resolve the issue. A notable aspect of the NTSB's Emergency Safety Advisory from September was the guidance provided for pilots on how to handle situations where the rudder system becomes jammed, much like what the United Airlines crew encountered. The NTSB criticized Boeing's current instructions, particularly in cases where the rudder system gets stuck or fails to respond properly. The manufacturer's current guidance suggests that pilots apply maximum force to free the system, with both pilots working together to regain control. In emergencies, this coordinated effort could help restore the plane's steering capabilities. However, the NTSB pointed out that this method isn't ideal when the issue is discovered during taxiing after landing. Pressing hard on the rudder pedals immediately after touchdown can lead to a temporary loss of control, potentially causing the plane to veer off the runway. In the worst case scenario, if pilots attempt to free the stuck rudder by applying excessive force, it could result in an unintended ground incident. The NTSB has called for Boeing to review and revise their flight manual to ensure that situations like these are handled more safely and effectively. The NTSB's concerns about current pilot instructions demonstrate that even small procedural oversights can escalate into significant risks. 
To prevent future incidents, it is imperative for Boeing to revise its guidelines and for airlines to ensure that such critical systems are thoroughly checked and updated. Addressing these challenges now will help restore confidence in both the aircraft and the company's long-term commitment to safety.